What's up, party people? Vernon Mashwell here from LaptopJock.com. Once again, it's on. And, uh, yeah, I'm here to tell you a story. Okay, no, seriously. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm at a meeting with the uh, owner. This is part two, obviously. I'm meeting with the owner, and uh, he says to me, So what exactly are you, what exactly are you, you know, you bring it to my club. It seems like I'm taking all the risk. Well, I almost crapped my pants. No, <laughs> no, I didn't almost crap my pants, but I was freaking out. But I did my research, right? So I knew what I was going to come back with. So I was like, Mr. Club Owner, listen, man, I'm bringing you people. You're closed on night X. So, you know, um, hey, money, you know, money's good, clothes are bad. Um, now this may work most of the time, but sometimes it may not work because a lot of times if club owners are opening their doors to you to um, do an EDM night or to do any night for that matter, um, they're actually losing money because obviously it takes money for them to open doors. So if you're not at a certain uh, profit level, then it makes no sense for them. Uh, but anyway, getting off track. So I basically come back, I stand firm and say, hey, look, I'm bringing you people. I'm bringing people through your door, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm putting mucho dinero in your pocket, el pocket out. I don't know if that's Spanish, but um, yeah, so that's what I told him. And, you know, he kind of was like, well, yeah, I understand this. Okay, so we can make it work. And, and that's part of, um, in part one, I told you guys to do your research now. If you, if you did your research and you know you can bring the numbers and you're confident that you can get the people out there, then you're, what you're saying is right. But if you're not doing that, then you're fooling yourself. Um, so there's a few key points, or three mainly, that uh, you should keep in mind um, in the second phase of, of, your, of your plan when you're planning to uh, establish your local EDM scene. Uh, you want to take all the information that you got on your initial um, uh, analysis, on your initial research, the market competition, you know, where the people coming from, what they're going to pay, and you're going to combine that and put it all into your proposal. Um, but before we get to the proposal, um, you want to know the club owner's hot buttons. Um, yeah, I looked. I cheated. I got notes over there. <laughs> You want to know the club owner's hot buttons, and the way you do that is by assessing that first initial meeting. You know, were they more price, price motivated or were they more motivated of establishing their club? If, if it's a new club, chances are um, the owner wants to build the brand, wants to build a name, so they're willing to kind of work with you, um, and they're, you know, they're, they're more willing to, to, I think, bring you in than... Uh, an established nightclub that's like, well, okay, what are you bringing to me? What do you have to offer? All right, so that's the first thing. The second thing is being able to show tangible proof. And um, again, this is part of your research as well. So this would kind of be along the lines if there is a national uh, headline act that's continually coming to your city, um, Cascade, you know, Chucky, Aoki, whoever. Um, you're, you're saying, well, hey, Mr. Club Owner, this is why I believe that this could possibly and potentially be a good night because X DJ X is coming to our town. He, he's been here for the last six months repeatedly, along with, you know, ID Fest, along with Rivalry, along with um, all these other um, music um, events that are going on, right? So that's what you want to incorporate into your initial um, proposal, your initial... Um, well, the why factor, well, why, why is this going to work? Okay, so once you do that, then um, at the, the last point is crafting a winning proposal. You, and basically all this means, it's, it's not rocket science, it's not like that 15-page freshman English paper that we're all like, you know, <laughs> no, it's not like that. It's, it's outlining the points of how you're going to promote the night, um, you know, what are you going to charge, what your splits are going to be, um, and you know, basically, how is it going to work for both parties to make a make a win-win scenario? And at the end of the day, that's what you want. You um, obviously the club owners taking more risks than you are, right? Right? Because you're not bringing anything except the people. Something happens, the club owner gets sued. You know, you're not liable. They are. So 
obviously it has to be a win-win, but they have to have more upside than you. And that's fine because you're doing this um, either to establish your brand or to build a reputation or to build your um, promotion company or whatever. You're not really in it for the money um, and you shouldn't be, you should be in it for the music. Um, because long term, um, that's, that's what's going to benefit you the most. I guess some people are in it for the money, I don't know. Uh, I guess you can be in it for the money if you want to be in it for the money, all right? So that's pretty much um, sums up uh, the second installment. Um, if you guys want to check out the blog, do so by clicking the link below. It'll be more in depth. I'm kind of ADD. I forget stuff. I leave stuff out all the time. And so you're probably going to want to read it. It's right down there. Go read it, go read it, go read it. And um, yeah, my name is Ryan Mashwell. I like to DJ. I like to get the party started, move it to the left, to the right. And uh, I like good music, man. So um, this is to help you guys. And then uh, hopefully you'll be able to establish your EDM scene locally and build your brand. LaptopJock.com. Better believe it. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.